a wall. So now let's um address this will be the part two. Right? We'll want to address right here. Maybe we have to make this page a little bit larger here. Is the word being one and the same. Because you're going to hear some folks say that we don't have to learn the language of His Majesty and, the, and heart, even as Rastafari. You know, um, that's, just, that, that's just plain laziness. You know, and that's just laziness right there. Because His Majesty also says that language is the key of culture. You know, we're saying communication between man and man. And our culture is is, how can you say, has been preserved for us in that language. Why do you think all the enemies of uh, this D2 Ethiopia, Holy Ethiopia, always wanted to burn I and I books and, 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 and sacred documents? Why do you think that was so? You understand? Know because he wanted to destroy this knowledge, this word and the words, the kalat, you know, and the true testimony. Now, we've touched on a vid. I don't think we posted them up as of yet, you know, where we actually go into some of those points in a little more detail. But here we want to address briefly and succinctly what His Majesty means by the word being one and the same. Now, first of all, we want to touch on what His Majesty says. Let's go right here. Um, His Majesty says, um, all right, let's, let's bring the camera around. So you can see the okay. So you can see the screen, and hopefully it's not too it's not too blur, right? It's not too blur right there. It is a little bit blur, but if you back up a little bit, you get a little closer. Okay, His Majesty says that we in Ethiopia have one of the oldest versions of the Bible, right? And then he says, um, but however old the version may be in whatever language it might be written, the word, and notice how the word is captured, the word, right, remains one and the same. So the word, now, these will say, well, that means it doesn't matter them hard translation or whatnot like that, and I mean, even the Gentiles don't, don't, don't agree with you there. I'm talking about the, those who actually study the word and find that some translations have been mistranslated, but that doesn't change the nature of Christ who is the Word made flesh. Don't, I mean, you read the Bible, right? I mean, John chapter 1, I think it's right in there. You know, you can find it for yourself. Then he goes on right here to say that no matter, uh, no, not no matter, but no doubt, right, no doubt, right, no doubt, you all remember reading the Acts of the Apostles of how Philip baptized the Ethiopian official. He is the first Ethiopian on record to have followed Christ. On record. It doesn't say that he was the first Ethiopian to follow Christ, but on record. And from that day onwards, the word of God, right? You said the word of God, the word of God, right? The word of God has continued to grow in the hearts of Ethiopians. Notice he doesn't say that the word of God began to grow. Because we have the Old Testament, um, Minyalik, and the the Queen of Sheba, her son, and the Ark of the Covenant, and the 12,000 firstborn Israelites, and the throne of David being established in Ethiopia, so forth and so on. So he wouldn't say that the Word of God began to grow. He said the Word of God has continued from the time of the Ethiopian eunuch. Or the Ethiopian eunuch, if you study, he was a Hebrew. Because that's why he was in Jerusalem for the Fasi called Passover, the high holy season, right? Not because it says that there were Jews or Hebrews, Jews, say, Judahites, or those who were convert or of the tribe of Judah, from every nation, from many different nations. And, and in the upper room, the gift of tongues was given, and they were able to speak in each other's language. See, there's a sign there. I don't know if you recognize what that sign is. And then his majesty goes on and say, I might say for myself that from early childhood I was taught to what? Appreciate the Bible, right? Appreciate the Bible and my love for it increases with the passage of time. All through my, all through my troubles I found it a cause of infinite comfort. Quote, come to me 
all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Who can resist an invitation, right, so full of compassion, question mark? Come to who? Who said those words and where did they say it? That's in, that's in Matthew, Matthew's gospel. I think it's Matthew, if I'm correct, chapter um, 12. I want to look that up, Matthew chapter 12. Let's see if we can bring that up right here. Okay, that's the quote about the natural man not perceiving the things of God because they must be spiritual or they must be supernatural, right? They must be spiritual. There's a spiritual warfare, right? That's not a Bible or words warfare, but it's a spirit. You understand it's a spirit. Christ says that his words are spirit and, you know, that, 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 his, that his flesh and everything is, is spirit and word. He says spirit and word. He didn't say even spiritual word, but that's spirit, because the word is spoken by spirit. And the word you don't see, the word is invisible, but you hear it. But a deaf person, you understand, a deaf person doesn't hear it. You understand? Um, anyway, um, come to me. Let's write, come to me. Come to me right here, and let's search it out, right? Let's search it out right here, and let's find it for ourselves, right? So, so you'll see it, too. Come to me. They say 157 places, so let's go directly, right? Let's go directly to, um, let's see, come to me. Oh, you know what? It's by come unto me, right? Come on, you know, come unto me, all ye, that, all ye that labor, right, that labor and are heavy laden, right? Labor, so let's go to labor. Let's put labor in there, just so you can see this for yourself that His Majesty was quoting the Bible, right? 11, 11 and 28. 11 and 28. You can see that right there. 11 and 28. Come to me, all ye, right? All ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. You see that? And I will give you rest. Matthew eleven twenty-eight. 28. Right? So His Majesty quotes Matthew 11 and 28, Right? Right here. And then he asks, who can resist? Right? He asks right there, who can resist an invitation? So this is an invitation. Right? This is an invitation so full of compassion. Right? Who can resist it? Then he goes on to state that because of this personal experience. And know something. He was speaking about the word remains one and the same. The word. Right? The word remains one and the same. That's this line right here. The word remains one and the same. Right? He's going to go on and speak about the Bible a little bit more. There's like two more paragraphs down here to it. But in the time that we have, we want to go to Arius. Because some of the things that um, Omar and others have said, some philosophies concerning, you know, the nature of Christ and the relationship, they contradict, they contradict the teaching of His Majesty. Yes, I know you can just read the Bible and that's what you've gotten out of it. But the same way Arius also got those... Um, false philosophies out of it, you understand, out of the Bible, even though he had other strong points, you understand, but, but, but where he went wrong, let's get right here, let's get this page right here, this page, this page is called um, St. Mary, right, St. Mary Ecumenical Councils, right, right you can see it right there, Ecu St. Mary of Zion, Ethiopian Orthodox, the Wahido Church, and that's London, right, so big up London, right. Right, the ecumenical council accepted by the Ethiopian Orthodox Tawahedo Church. Isn't this the church of his majesty? So there were some councils that were accepted and some rejected. We would do well if we would study and find out why did the faith of his majesty, those who were those saints that earnestly contended for the faith, why were some accepted and some were rejected? Now this might be a little small right here, and it is. And we probably should actually get a larger, I mean, a larger view of this. But we'll deal with this right here and read it. All right, read it for you. Now, these are the topics that were discussed, right? The topics that that, that were discussed by the by the synod, right, were the heretical teaching of Arius, right? Remember, we said heresies when we was reading um, Corinthians chapter eleven that it says that there would be these sort of heresies. Let's move this around right here. And, um, all right, let's move this around right here. And, and, uh, all right, all right let's, okay, here we go. All right, 
Okay, so, you know what, a good book to get, really, a good book to get, I hope you're not against books and stuff like that, I don't think you are, being an author and everything, but this book right here, right, this book right here, the Ethiopian Tawahedo Church, or well, some say Tawahedo, that's a bad pronunciation, but anyway, Tawahedo Church, right, um, by this brother here, the late Archbishop Yisahak, right? The late Archbishop Yisahak. Okay, so you can get a little clearer, a little clearer picture, right? So this is the Ethiopian Tawahedo Church. You could probably do like we did and others. You know, if you search on the internet, you might find a good copy of it, maybe even on, you know, eBay or something like that, right? Okay, so here we go right here. Let's Let's move this up. So, they went to discuss, right, the heretical teaching of Arius, right, A-R-I-U-S, Arius, the heretical teaching of Arius. Now, in the scripture, to show you that heresies, notice that this was around 325. Um, this is in Nicaea, Nicaea, or Nicaea, right, Nicaea. Remember the verse that we just had quoted in the previous portion. In the previous portion it was it was first Corinthians, I think chapter eleven. So everything seemed to be eleven. Not making a big thing out of that. You understand? Um eleven oh yeah, something you said um um speaking to uh Omar. He said, um you are idolater, you know, he was pretty heated. And then we when we said that he's speaking like a, a foolish Gentile. You got you got a little upset about that, bruh. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I mean, you can't take it like you try to give it. You understand? But, you know, novice, novices get puffed up. That's why I said your, your pride. You know what I'm saying? We, you know, we think of you as having those natural gifts. What we're saying is one must receive the Spirit of God, but should not deny the Son, because the Son, the true Son, Jesus Christos, is the Son. You know what I'm saying? And He is God of God. You know what I'm saying? He is a God. He's of the same substance. Like, I would be of the same substance. I'm talking natural now. Same substance genetically. You know what I'm Speaking of natural things, as my um, as my father. You know what I'm saying? But yet I'm my own person. See, and this is also another area that um needs to be addressed because the beauty of it is that the Ethiopian um, the Ethiopian uh, Christians have already gone through these things already. That's why when we talk about the Tawahedo, like we mentioned the Rastafari Tawahedo as, as on the, the board there and went through the Ritua Hymenot. It helps us. And I, I was not familiar with this either. I was, I was, you know, reading the Bible and knew how to compare some verses with other verses and, you know, got some basics there. But, but then you start to recognize that you need to be guided. You know, you say to me, are you a master of Israel and you know not these things? You know what I'm saying? You know, and, and, and when you said that, you know, it was the same things that we had said, but totally out of context. You know, you asked whether we know about the parables in the Bible, right? And, we, and the parables, you can go to our study page, and we was dealing with the parables, what, in in, in, in 1992, I'm talking about seriously, you know, really deeply and studying them, um, and with the with spirit of God, you know what I'm saying? Then you can really interpret the parables. But even in the Schofield Reference Bible, some very accurate, basic level interpretations. Anyway, let's get into this point about areas for a moment, and and, and just to show something. I wanted to show you this right here, but but the view is not very, you know, the, the angle of the camera, and this is one of those cameras that can't really zoom in, zoom out, and all that. So we, we just we just suffer it right now. But the page is um, St. Mary of Zion. What you can do is put Arius and Ethiopian Orthodox in, in, in your browser search, Arius and Ethiopian Orthodox. And when it comes up, look for St. Mary, St. Mary of, 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 of Zion. And that link right there, the, to Arius, A-R-I-U-S, Ethiopian Orthodox, those three words, will lead you to um, this particular page right here. 
and it's a kind of a long page, but this portion of the page says that the topics, right, the topics that were discussed at this synod um, in uh, uh, Nikia or, or Nikia, Nicaea, as one say, in 325, um, were this, the heretical teaching of Aries. What was the heretical? Okay, what was the teaching of her of Arius, right? With some call Arian Arianism, which is very interesting too. You know, a lot of Islam kind of um, comes out of that, or, or Islam was affected by that too. But we're not going to go into that part of the history and story right now. Let's just deal with what were the heretical teachings or the teaching of Arius that was considered heretical, right? And we have to keep in mind. You understand what um, 1 Corinthians chapter um, 11 says right here. He says, Now in this that I declare to you, I praise you not. Right? Brother Omar, I praise some of the things that you put up before, but on this teaching that contradicts the teaching of His Majesty, um, I, and I, I and I praise you not, that ye come together not for the better, but for the worse, that this, this, this doctrine, calling, it, you know, saying his majesty is God, you know, you, you, you never heard us say, oh, you're wrong about that, how can you say that? And saying that we should obey and hear his majesty, and, right, and do what his majesty says, I agree with you. So I'm trying to say to you that you just need to check out what his majesty uphold and upheld, which is the faith that was once delivered right, and received and revealed, in other words, to the Kedusan, the Ethiopian, you understand, is that Kedusan that we know historically in Christianity. You know, and that's why others like the Romanists sought to annihilate them and genocide them, you understand, because of that true witness, you understand, which Rastafari now is supposed to be the recipient of. We are to be the, that kingdom of the priesthood, but most of us don't know, well, the, the priesthood has been changed, you know what I'm saying, and, and therefore that it necessitates the change of the law, and we know that Yeshua HaMoshiach, that our Lord, in other words, comes from the tribe of Judah, or Yehuda, and we know Moa and Bess is the M Negeda Yehuda, so all that should be connected right there, very, very um, um, succinctly, but here it says, verse 18, 1 Corinthians 11 and 18 is first, for first of all, first of all, so let's deal with first things first. First of all, right, it says here, when ye come together in the church, I hear that there be divisions, you know, diverse doctrines. We all saying that, yes, Jarastafar is a lot, CI. But then when we reason, there's a bunch of different kind of doctrines and stuff and philosophy. And then when we say, okay, what does His Majesty say about this? And, and, and what faith does His Majesty defend? That's what we should, that's the standard for I and I. Not what I think, not what's right in your eyes or my eyes, but what the one whom we call God and Father says. But that requires us to, to, to submit and to humble and to learn and to grow and to receive. All right? But anyway... That, that's also, I can't make you, I'm not trying to make you, if that's what you want to believe, you can believe it, but if you utter it in the, His Majesty's name, ones and ones are going to tell you, are going to step to you and, and challenge you on that. And you're going to find that our teaching is consistent. Those who are rebuking you, you understand, per se, regarding, notice, some might be rebuking you about Hannah Selassie being God, and perhaps you've gone through a lot of that. So you, now you think that now, the Rastafari, some Rastafari like Brother Iadonis, uh, you know, or Yadinos, you know, Yadin, as well as others, and Brother Ayer and Meheret, uh, maybe we're the only ones, you know what I mean, who knows, who, who's really, you know, but um, you got to recognize the love of it, too, but perhaps still, you know, this is a little bit much all at once, you understand, but I, and I you know, and I love the eye for Yeshua's sake. You know, to the glory of His Majesty. I hope you can receive that in Yeshua's name, in Yeshua's name, Gietai Yeshua's, um, or Lord Yeshua, you know, Adoni. Anyway, verse 19 says, For there must also be heresies among you. Now notice, this is roughly around 90 or so A.D., give or take, right, um, some years, right? So that's still in the first century of Christianity, what they call 
you know, the first century uh, A.D. For there must be heresies among you, that they which are approved may be made manifest among you, that those who are approved. So what constitutes this approval? Now, we already told you from the top of it that, that when his majesty says that the word is one and the same, he's speaking about the word that incarnated. He's saying, what is that word that incarnated? Well, let's go to John. I, I said you can go there yourself, but since we're talking about this and ones are listening and hopefully studying, get your Bible, go to John chapter 1, right? We're in John chapter 1, and let's go to verse um, 14. Verse 14, John chapter 1, verse 14, and let's read. It says, and the word, notice how the word is in full cap. It's not it's saying words. You need to learn the difference between words, translated words, and the word, because the word was made flesh. That right there is supernatural. Think about it. The word was made flesh, you understand, and dwelt among us, right? And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, the Ab, full of grace and truth. That's the key word right there. Full of grace, right? Full of grace and truth, right? If you go a little further, it says right here, it says that John, who is likened to um, um, the Honorable Marcus Garvey, right? John, who first baptized, right, in that sense, and that's why Rastafari has that connection with Marcus Garvey, and he says he's like John. Well, have you heard what Yeshua says about John? The old saying, John was offended. The old saying, and and he says, "Bless are all those who are not offended in me," and and that happened to our John or Marcus Garvey. But here it says that John bear witness of him and cried or shouted, saying, "This was he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me." Then it goes on, verse 16, and of his fullness, his fullness, the mulatu, his fullness, have all we received. And grace for grace, verse 17, for the law, or Torah, right, the Torah, right, was given by Moses, was given by Mashu, or Muse, Bamarinya, and them hark and the goodness. But, Grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Grace and truth came by Jesus Christos, or by Yeshua HaMoshiach in the Amharic. Now, you like to quote a lot, I've noticed, verse 18. It's not a bad verse. No man hath seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. Is that not Yeshua HaMoshiach? Now, Arius or Arian, right, he had some different views. So the discussion now at this synod in 325 A.D., right, the synod of Ale the, or, or the Alexandrian synod, it was led by Archbishop uh, Iskender or Alexander against the heresy of Arius. Now, we're not having no conference or no, none of that right here, but just to, it's, it's, it's interesting how these things are um, similar, you understand, because if you have not received the true spirit of his majesty, if, you're, if your teaching doesn't reflect him, then that means, in a sense, you are knowingly or unknowingly rejecting him. Now, the synod, after discussing these matters, here's what it explained to Arius and um, Brother Omar and others who have this sort of philosophy, whoever ones may be, I'm explaining to you also because His Majesty is a defender of the faith. And this is the faith that they defend it. And when you really receive it and understand it, then you truly will understand um, how His Majesty is who He says He is. And, and, and the real truth of the matter of His, his divinity that's based on the true foundation, no new foundation, the faith once delivered to the saints. Now, it says right here, it says, um, 
they, they, they try to explain, or really, they explain to Arius that all the biblical verses quoted by him, like the verses you like to quote, right, and his followers and others who also say he's absolutely correct, what's that? Against the divinity of the Son of God were mistaken. You see, and you've quoted many verses to deny that Yeshua, that Jesus, Gaetachin Jesus Christos, that he is the Son of God and that he is divine. Now, and you also propose another another one as Christ because that one has gone around and got in some newspaper reports about breaking idols and stuff with Catholic idols. Is that what the will of his majesty is for us? And now then we'll bounce the Old Testament. Because you know, they're not in the new, the veil is still over their eyes, but that veil is